Chelsea's soul-destroying defeat. Club previews Atleti Tyrell the hits back at Solskjaer. Barca want Braithwaite and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Matt Froelich. You and the footballers and this is the Daily News. First off and to Chelsea's soul-destroying defeat. Not why words but the words of Chelsea manager Frank Lampard. That was after he saw his side lose 2-0 at home to Manchester United in an evening in a match which was pretty much ruined by VAR. So there were three major talking points throughout the game. First off was Harry Maguire's kick after being fouled. Should he have been sent off in my view? Absolutely. Now loads of you are going to be like, oh mate, you're just talking bias, this and that. Hyung Min Son did the exact same thing against Chelsea for Spurs. What happened? Red card. Maguire does it, no red card. I mean, come on. There's got to be some consistency. This is exactly what I'm talking about with VAR. Personally, I don't really have a problem with VAR. I think he gets some things right, some things wrong. But the consistency in the rules has to be there. Personally, I think Maguire should have got sent off for that retaliation. And it came back to haunt Chelsea as he was the one who scored the second goal. Alongside this, there were two other incidents. First off, as Pilicueta was adjudged to have pushed Brandon Williams when Chelsea got the equaliser at 1-0. Although, what they didn't look at was the fact that Aspila Cueta himself was pushed by Fred, which then caused him to push Williams. Either way, none of them had anything to do with the goals. Kurt Zuma smashed them all into the back of the net from the corner. So that one, a little bit harsh for Chelsea. I put the score at 1-0. At 2-0, though, after Maguire had headed in the second, Giroud was called offside for his goal. That was offside. I know it's only a toe, but those are the rules. It's black and white. You're either offside or you're not. Giroud was. VAR actually got that one right. In spite of this, though, it really shows that anyone can be anyone in this race for the top four or top five, depending on how the Man City thing turns out. Manchester United was supposedly rubbish, given no hope away to Chelsea. Chelsea with Frank Lampard playing some excellent youngsters, but they turned them over 2-0. This really should give any team hope that any result can happen, except for Saturday, when Spurs will 110% definitely, most definitely lose at Stamford Bridge because it's Tottenham away at Stamford Bridge. Classic Spurs. Anyway, all that nonsense aside, let's move on to the Champions League because Jurgen Klopp has previewed his tie against Atletico Madrid and for some bizarre reason seems to be building Diego Simeone's side up as the best in the world. He was quoted as saying that Liverpool players have to be ready for a tie like no other. It's the biggest game in football and they'll be playing against an unbelievable Atleti side who just squeeze out results. I'm not sure, Jürgen, but have you been watching La Liga this season? Atleti are on a pretty poor run of form. They really can't score a few goals for love nor money. And Liverpool just so happen to have pretty much the best defence in world football and the best keeper in world football. Not so sure what Klopp's doing here, but in my opinion, he's probably just making it seem like it's really difficult. So when they inevitably win, he'll look like an absolute mastermind. And if for some bizarre reason Liverpool don't win, he'll be there like, I told you so, I knew Atleti were good. In my eyes, there's only going to be one winner over the two legs, and that'll be Liverpool, even if they just do scrape through in Madrid tonight or even come away with a draw. But next up, and to more utter nonsense, and this time from Mina Ri the super agent in charge of all of Paul Pogba's affairs off the pitch has hit how a Manchester United Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because, well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had a little bit to say about Paul Pogba. He's saying that United own him and he is their player. So what's Raiola done? In my opinion, he's blown it completely out of proportion. Last night, he went on some sort of massive tirade on social media saying that no one owns Pogba, that he has the right to make any move that he wants. Honestly, the guy's just stirring the pot. He obviously wants to transfer for Pogba because he knows it'll make him a ridiculous amount of money. He can get even more money for his client. There is no way that Solskjaer literally means Manchester United own Pogba. Of course, they own his contract. He's a Manchester United player. But if he wants to move, then a discussion will be had. The fact that he's blown this completely out of proportion and seems to think that Solskjaer's got him locked in some sort of Manchester United basement is definitely, definitely wrong. Despite this, though, I can see Paul Pogba moving in the summer. In fact, if I was to put a little bit of a prediction on it, I'd say Paul Pogba doesn't really feature for Manchester United for the rest of the season, but then turns up for France in the Euros, has a blinding tournament, France win the trophy, and Pogba gets a massive, massive move, and Rayola a massive, massive, massive payday. But moving on, and to some more transfer news involving Martin Braithwaite. Haven't heard of him? He's the 28-year-old Leganes striker. Of course, you haven't really heard of him. He's not really pulling up trees in La Liga, but he is going to get a move to Barcelona. That according to latest reports that because of the injury to Usman Dembele, Barcelona have been given a 15-day period when they can make an emergency signing. They'll have to pay the £18 million release clause on Braithwaite, but it'll 
might add an extra option for them up front. Last week, we spoke about William Jose from Real Sociedad. That one didn't come off. And at the moment, they've only got Ansu Fati, Antoine Griezmann and Lionel Messi as recognised attackers. So they have been allowed by La Liga to bring in an extra player. Again, like with William Jose, I doubt Braithwa is going to be a starter, but he will be an extra body for the rest of the campaign as they fight for La Liga and for the Champions League. So last but not least, we'll come to a quick roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news, where Raheem Sterling's agent has said he is committed to the club, even if they are banned from the Champions League for two seasons. Chelsea's Mario Pasalic will join Atlanta at the end of the season for 12 and a half million after making his loan deal permanent. Brazilian club Botafogo are expected to announce the signing of 36-year-old Yaya Torre. And yesterday, apparently Spurs' new home kit for next season was released. Take a look at it here. It is God damn awful. So there you have it. That is all from today's daily news. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on everything and smash the like button whilst you're down there. You can also click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.